Hi, guys, and welcome back to Omaha Places, the podcast. I'm your host, Connor Olson, and I'm the founder of Omaha Places and 402 Social. Delaney is actually on vacation this week, so we have a really special guest with us today, Dan Hoppin. He's also the host of the Restaurant Hoppin podcast. So can you give our listeners a little introduction into who you are and how you kind of got started in the Omaha food world? Yeah, sure. I mean, I can't promise to fill Delaney's shoes capably, but I'll do my best to today. Um, I'm just a guy who who absolutely loved to eat and really got into food um, and started just posting reviews probably about in 2015. Honestly, uh, just started a crappy little WordPress blog. And somehow it just gained a lot of traction, a lot of attention. And I was um, approached by a, a podcast studio. And they were like, Hey, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? I was like, Oh, no, not really. But we'll give it a shot. I, I I was trained in media. That was kind of my first job coming out of college. So um, the first couple months, uh, it was mostly just like me having my buddies on and we talk about our favorite burgers in the city and, and stuff like that. Um, but I was always a huge fan of block 16. Yeah. Who, great restaurant with a huge social media following. Uh, Jessica and Paul Urban are just fantastic people. And so I just reached out to them and I was like, Hey, would you guys ever want to come on the show? And they said, yes. And when they came on and that episode published, that kind of opened the floodgates for every other restaurant because they have such good relationships with everyone in Omaha and they have such street cred that when they came on, it was like, okay, we, we don't necessarily know who this restaurant hopping guy is but if block 16 is involved with it then it has some credibility yeah. and now four and a half years later yeah restaurant hopping has just grown like crazy um got uh, a new podcast releases every thursday um i have a conversation with a, a chef a restaurant tour baker coffee shop owner whoever it might be we do live podcasts once a month it's uh we've done three restaurant hopping dinners now Cool. It's yeah, it's it's just grown into something that I never could have expected looking yeah. back a couple of years ago. Sometimes those are the best projects. Absolutely. When it's so unexpected. I was recently listening to the live episode you did with Dante. Oh, and yeah. I had been to Dante many times, but never known like the history of it or that they had been open for so long. So that was really cool. And I had also never listened to a live podcast episode, I think. Um, and I from my perspective, I feel like you're one of the most knowledgeable people about the Omaha restaurant scene and you've been around way longer than Omaha places has. And you have those like personal relationships with a lot of restaurant owners and chefs and stuff. So a lot of times we get questions about like how we find our information. And a lot of it is from other like restaurant foodies and stuff like you. It's like, uh, yeah, we can go and see where you guys are going and so kudos to you because you are very knowledgeable about the Omaha food scene. Thank you. I don't think that there are many people who probably spend as much time thinking about or browsing social media or anything with the Omaha food scene. So, it, you know, you just saturate yourself in something and you're naturally going to know more about it. Yeah. But what I love is is exactly what you said there about Dante is people can have their favorite restaurants, but there's this whole new level of understanding when you get to know the people behind them and you understand their background and their influence and all these different things that are coming together, the history of the cuisine that they're cooking and how all these different influences come together and create one plate that's set in front of you. I don't know. I I just feel like you appreciate it that much more. Yeah. You appreciate it more. It builds that community and like everybody just feels better when they're like really part of the community i think so all of that ties together i'd agree 100 sure. percent. all right so i want to know where where have you been recently it can be either a new place that you've tried or places old favorites that you go back to time and time again what have your last couple of weeks looked like okay so i got to give a shout out to one of my favorites uh Izzy's Pizza. So Izzy's Pizza Bus moved here from Las Vegas uh, a couple of years ago. But as of as of recording, they just opened their pizza shop. So their first brick and mortar. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, that was as of recording last Wednesday. Okay, so got a chance to go down there and see the new digs. It's pretty small. So it's still mostly a takeout place. But they've got a couple tables. They've got a patio. But what's really cool is you can 
um, the only thing separating like the dining room and the ordering area from the kitchen is like a giant plate glass window. So you can look oh. back there and you, you can see your pizzas being built. You can see them going into the oven. You can give the owner a fist bump if you want to. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's really cool. And their pizza is phenomenal. For those who haven't yeah. had Detroit style, it's, the dough is kind of a, a lighter, fluffier dough, kind of similar to a focaccia. But then they've got that caramelized cheese crown around mm -hmm. the outside that is just incredible. So check out Izzy's Pizza. Where is their brick and mortar located? Uh, it's down kind of in South Omaha downtown. I don't know the okay. exact uh, location. Okay. Um, so not near the. Not near trucks and taps. Okay. No, totally different part of town. Um, was a little bit more inconvenient for me, honestly, but I don't care. I will drive for food <laughs> and especially for great pizza. Yeah. And that is great pizza. Do you know if their um, bus is still at trucks and taps? It is not currently. Okay. Um, I know that they're focusing their efforts right now on making sure they get the shop up and running and, okay. and get everything set. But the bus, the bus is not dead. The bus will be hitting the streets again within the next cool. couple of weeks. Uh, that will definitely happen. Cool. And yeah, it, for those of you who may not know what Trucks and Taps is, it's in Bellevue, I believe, right? Uh, it's at 108th and Q. Okay. Okay. Um, and it is literally, I think, an old Sonic. Mm -hmm. And they have brought in a bunch of food trucks and you can go get your food and then go sit in the little like patio area of the old Sonic. Yeah. So drinks too. Yeah. So they transform the Sonic into a bar and then obviously there's the inner seating area and then they have food trucks post up around the outside. So there's always four or five food trucks there. So you can go grab some food and just sit there and eat it. You can grab it to go. You can get a drink if you want. They have a lot of events like music bingo, trivia, things like that. It's a really cool place. Cool. One of my friends, uh, her and her husband are obsessed with Izzy's and her husband works for Hormel and I think he, maybe he they gets use their some pepperonis, product, yeah. yep. <laughs> and she's gluten-free and she's always like, they need to make a gluten-free pizza crust so I can eat it. And I don't know if they have yet, but I'll have to ask her if she, if they've given in to her asking him for gluten-free yet. I don't believe that they have, but I know it's something that Brett is working on because okay. that's obviously a very popular request. Yeah, now. yeah. Well, cool. Okay. Brand new Izzy's brick and mortar location. I'll have to go check that out for sure. Anywhere else fun that you've been? On the complete opposite end of something brand new, something very old and established, Dairy Chef. Yes, they're open for the season. Yes. Out in Elkhorn, yeah. my wife and I, we went last week. Um, obviously, if you love soft serve ice cream, you should love Dairy Chef. They're I mean, like the OG. Yeah, the the nostalgia alone of just being able to go there and order, you know, at the outside counter and then sit at the tables and kind of have community while eating ice cream mm -hmm. is so much fun. But then the ice cream, I mean, they just mix so many toppings into everything. And my wife, like we're big fans of Dairy Chef just to begin with yeah but she is a like junkie for all things s'mores like when mm -hmm. she sees something that's s'mores she's like i want that and they released a special s'mores storm i think it's their special for the um for the month of may and she sent me a screenshot of it and was just like when are we going <laughs> i need this so we went out and got those and <clears throat> They're very, very good. We took our dog for the first time and they gave him a pup cup, a little cup of ice cream. So, cute. so Dairy Chef just, I mean, that's always a yeah. fantastic place to go. And they're only open seasonally. So in they close, I think just during the winter months. Yes. So yeah, I got to go while they're open. Have you ever tried Christy cream over in Council Bluffs? It's the same concept kind of i've not but i have heard very good things about yeah. it so it's it's a place that i have on my list people always ask me like hey, do you ever go to places in council bluffs do you go to places in lincoln and i'm not opposed to going places like that but mm -hmm. there are so many restaurants in <laughs> yeah. omaha i mean my list of places that i want to go to and the places that i have that i love that i haven't been in a while is just so long that i just i struggle to get yeah. out of the city and go other places but crispy or crispy Christ, crispy cream. cream yeah yes yeah. i have heard of it it's on my list yeah my mom is from council bless and so when i was younger like my grandma lived over there so crispy cream is kind of like my nostalgic place like i know dairy chef is yeah. for a lot of people in, in omaha so yeah summer months we love we love those um ice cream spots um 
Okay, I have a couple places I want to shout out, and I kind of chose to mention non-food places since oh, sure. I knew that you would mention <laughs> restaurants probably. Um, so I had kind of like a, a bit of a restock week because I was out of town last week. So I went to Buff City Soap and Exist Green. Um, I don't know if you've been to either one of those. I've not. Are you familiar with either one? Yes, I've heard of them both. Okay. So I think Exist Green definitely is local. It's in Dundee. I bought like um, refillable shampoo and conditioner bottles years ago. And so I'll go into Exist Green refill them they have tons of like really sustainable products in there you know soaps and baby wash and literally everything you could think of i didn't even know that refillable shampoo and conditioner bottles were a thing so you're yeah. like educating me right now <laughs> why, yeah. why am i going to target and getting a new bottle every time right because that just uses so much plastic oh, i yeah. bought these like ceramic bottles off etsy i think like three years ago and i'll just go into exist green and fill them up and i bought huge ones so i only have to go in maybe like once every other month i love that yeah and supports a small business so that's yeah, I love okay. doing that. And then I when I was at Exist Green, I went next door to Great Harvest Bread Company. Oh yeah. I had never been there before. Oh my god. It was I was I had always wanted to go. So I walked in and the lady was like, Hi, how can I help you? And I literally told her, I was like, I've never been here. So I just wanted to like come in and see what you have. And you also know it's a local company, which I was only person in there and she got a phone call and she answered it and it was her son who was younger and I'm like I just love this about locally owned businesses like obviously everybody has families and stuff too like just because you're at work doesn't mean your family ceases to exist mm -hmm. for you know the time you're there and I ended up getting I think it was like a raisin loaf cinnamon raisin loaf oh my god it was so good I'm still eating it because I'm just trying to like savor right. every slice that I eat of it. Pro but, tip, if you go on Fridays and maybe Saturdays, but Fridays for sure, they do hollow bread oh. and it's heavenly. My oh wife my and I made French toast out of that. We made breakfast sandwiches out of that. We'll just eat it on its own. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. I'll have to get that next time. Awesome. Um, And then, yeah, Buff City Soap too. I just get like um bars of soap and dishwasher or not dishwasher laundry detergent there and it's not a locally owned company but they do make all of their stuff local oh, wow. so they actually like mix the soap and like cut the soap and then just put them out on the shelves like in the omaha store they have a couple of different locations i always go to the one near like 72nd and dodge like okay. right across from children's hospital so a little bit of a restock week. Got to get all those essential home things. Um, but yeah, those are those are the places that I went. Any other places you wanted to shout out? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to do another restaurant, but yeah. uh, Euro Kings. So oh. it's about a year old now. If anyone is familiar with the old Sam's Euros, they moved into that spot. But it's so when you hear the term Euro, everybody thinks of the traditional pita, you got your combination of lamb and beef meat that shaved off the uh, um, the spit, and then tzatziki sauce, onions, tomatoes. That these guys are doing something totally different. They're doing like New York style euros, which is more of like a street food. So they've got this just really just beautiful buttery saffron, or excuse me, not saffron, jasmine rice. And then they top that with all kinds of chicken and gyro meat. And then they have this amazing, like creamy garlicky sauce that they just squirt over the top. I cannot say enough about this place. And the portions are probably enough for two to three meals. Wow. I can't stop eating it. So I just make it <laughs> one and like fast for the rest of the day. But yeah. Euro Kings is definitely a place worth checking out. Okay. And if you, and if you love the traditional Euro, they have that too. Like you can get, you can get everything in a pita if you want, but the rice platter is the way to go. Okay. Where's that located? Um, you are, it's amazing. Like you would think that I would like be really good <laughs> with directions and know my locations and everything. I do not. I'm okay. terrible with directions. I can barely find my way out of this building. Good thing you have Google maps. <laughs> yes, exactly. If I didn't have this, I yeah. <laughs> wouldn't be able to make it out of my own neighborhood. Do you have like a, a, at least a quadrant of Omaha that it might be in? I feel like I've driven past it, but I can't think of like where I've driven past it. I'm 
honestly not really sure okay well we'll look it up and put it on in the description <laughs> or just good. go go follow them on social media yeah them, just, i mean yeah say. just just google it or yeah. put it into your phone yeah and figure it out yeah well cool okay so moving on to some of the questions that people submitted so every week we put a question sticker up on our instagram story on omaha places and you guys can submit questions either about restaurants or the behind the scenes of running an account like Omaha places, literally anything that you guys could want to know, feel free to ask in those, those question boxes. So one of the questions we got this week was what is the best new restaurant you have visited recently? I know we just kind of mentioned a couple new restaurants. Um, do you want to go first? Yes, because I've got one that I'm very excited about. It's called Udalali. Yeah. Uh, it's the newcomer. To, see, I actually know where this one is. <laughs> it's the newcomer to the Dundee neighborhood. So yep. you were uh, by it recently. But if anyone is familiar with the old uh, Mark's Bistro, it actually moved into that space. And their food is just fantastic. The lobster roll is the best I've ever had. It is just so rich and buttery and Oh man, they have this aioli in there that's fantastic. And then their mac and cheese is unlike any that I've had. It's a four cheese blend. And the cheese sauce itself is a little bit looser, but it just like they use cavatappi noodles, which are these like spiral noodles. And the cheese just, you know, is able to get mm -hmm. all in there. They top it with some breadcrumbs for texture. Food is off the charts. Even if the food were average, though. This is the type of place I want to support because they actually partner with um, a program at Metro that helps formerly incarcerated individuals cool. get back in the workplace. So a lot of the cooks in their kitchen are people who are coming out of prison and getting a chance to learn skills and get coaching and honestly just gain confidence yeah. to be able to come back into society because recidivism is unfortunately just such a devastating part of trying to you know get back into society especially if you've been in prison for a couple of years i mean there are a lot of people who make one mistake when they're young yeah. and then it's really hard to get back so places like Udalali are giving them a chance and saying we believe in you you know you, we know you have skills we know you have the ability to contribute to this community and we're going to give you that shot here in a restaurant setting so yeah. when you go to Udalali, not only are you getting a great meal but you get to support this really cool cause yeah i love that isn't the mac and cheese that you were talking about the same as the Mark's old mac and cheese? It's close. Okay. So they worked with Mark's old owner and she gave them the recipe and they they didn't want to do the exact same thing because that's that's Mark's mac and cheese, but they tinkered with it a little bit. And they actually have a video up on social media. You can go, but you'd have to scroll back a little bit of ways because this was before they opened, but they have a video of her trying the new rendition of the mac and cheese. And she's yeah. like, oh, this is even better. So if you were a fan of the Mark's Mac and Cheese, you have to go try this and let me know if, if yeah. it is in fact that I never got a chance to go to Mark's, which is one of my regrets. Either, yeah. um, but that Mac and Cheese, it has a cult following and, mm -hmm. and now it lives on. Yeah, we posted a video about Udalali like right after they opened and Delaney was the one who filmed that. So I haven't actually been there yet. But somebody commented on the video and they just said, golly, what a day. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a funny comment. Like, that's just strange. I didn't really think anything of it. And then maybe like a month later, found out that it's from the, a song from um, Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I had no idea. And I just, you know, I'm always looking, you know, for new restaurants and stuff. And I saw, started seeing stuff about this place called Udalali. And I was like, it looks cool. I'm seeing good things. What the heck is that name? Yeah. And I mentioned it to my wife and she looked at me at, like I had two heads and she's like, <laughs> you know, that's from Robin Hood, right? Like the animated movie. And I was like, uh, no, I guess, I guess so. So yeah, there, there is meaning behind it. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, taking that, that mission of, of Robin Hood of, of giving back to those who are less fortunate. And that's exactly the, the mission yeah. that they have what a cool cool business mm -hmm. yeah, i need to I need to go in there i think delaney said she had the ravioli maybe and that it was like 
one of the best raviolis oh, wow. I've ever had okay. in my life. Yeah. There you go. I haven't had the ravioli yet, yeah. so that just gives me a reason to go back. It, it might it might not be a ravioli, but something where it's like very like a standard dish, you know, that you could find everywhere, or make easily at home. So I feel like a dish that simple sometimes is like hard to do really well. But so it was like good good praise that she said it was the best she had ever had that's kind of their whole thing is taking foods that are familiar and comfortable like lasagna like a chicken sandwich a burger um uh loaded fries things like things that you are very familiar with just you know comfort food that mm -hmm. kind of warms you up from the inside and then they just put like one or two little chefy tweaks on it mm -hmm. that just elevate it a little bit where you're like oh I know this dish. I really like this dish, but it's a little bit different than I've had previously. Yeah, and that's, I think, what better. makes that place special. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah, definitely go check out Udalali. Mine that I was going to shout out for new restaurants, I guess this has been open for a couple months now, is Memoir. Oh, Memoir is yeah. great. I think that might be one of my favorite restaurants in Omaha, at least at the moment. Um, you know, favorite can always change and oh, does sure. change all the time. But yeah, Memoir is a new concept by Flagship Restaurant Group. They're located down at the riverfront, like right by Heartland of America Park. So great to like go to Memoir, go walk around the old market, something like that. I have been a lot of times now, but the last time that I went, I just had the best service as well. Like the food is oh, amazing. Yeah. The service is like 20 out of 10. It was like everybody who works there is just so sweet, so helpful, like 10 out of 10 experience. And it is a gorgeous restaurant. Like, yes. I feel like I'm dining in like the lobby of like a five star hotel in yeah. New York City or something. I mean, it is next level. Yeah. Nothing like anywhere else in Omaha. No. Like you feel like you're in a completely different city, like you mentioned. So I've been a couple times for lunch, but I feel like going for dinner is the move. And we're actually mm. going to go with another couple in a couple weeks. So I would love cool. to hear from you, Connor. Like Ooh. you've been more than I have. Give me some recommendations. <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay. Well, we sat the last time I went and this was the only time I had been for dinner. We actually sat at the bar, which was kind of fun because the bartenders, like it's always just fun to talk to the bartenders oh, sure. and you can get like food at the bar too. Um, I'm trying to think what we had. I w went with one friend and we split two different dishes. I think we got some chicken dish. I'm not sure what that was. It might have been like a parma eggplant parmesan oh, or something. Okay. Yeah. And then we also got some pasta dish. I should have written down what, exactly what we got. I, I can't remember addresses. You can't yeah. remember the exact dishes. We all have our things. To, together, we'll we'll figure it out on this podcast, yeah. I feel like. Um, but yeah, we had told the waiter that we were going to be splitting these two dishes. And they brought them out, actually split for us. Oh, which that's was just awesome. So nice. Yes. Yeah. So that like attention to detail in the service, just like really can make or break and i mean it wouldn't have broken the experience but it really made the experience like exceptional um yeah i also couldn't tell you what drinks we got but i would recommend sitting at the bar i guess you guys are going to be with um, another couple so that might be kind of hard to sit at the bar but if you and sarah ever ever go just the two of you that's a fun experience to sit at the bar noted okay yeah. thank you yeah we I also, so I did memoir and then we walked over to Barry and Rye and got a couple of drinks at Barry and Rye. I've never been there. Really? Uh -uh. It's, it's cute. It's a, have you like seen the inside of it? I've not. Okay. It's kind of, it's not the exact same vibe as memoir, but it is also very nicely decorated. Like they have like chandeliers hanging from the ceiling and stuff. It's like right on Howard street, like across the street from gather in the old market. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so that was memoir plus Barry and Rye was a really good combination for a fun night out. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Noted. Um, okay. What, let's see what our next question is. Okay. Best places for cheap, but quality food in Omaha. And I want to first give a little caveat to this question because I don't think a lot of Omaha places followers realize this, but I actually intentionally never mention prices of things on Omaha places because I know that what is cheap versus expensive is very different across the board. Incredibly you know, just, subjective. Just, yeah, exactly. Um, so I personally just, I never mentioned that. And 
full transparency too at omaha places we get a lot of food comped so we also don't look at prices a lot um so i actually didn't write anything down for this which i don't know if you want to shout out any places that came to mind no i'd be happy to okay. um yeah i i pay for all my meals um i and I, you know that's each creator um to their own i'm yeah. someone who yeah i'm i'm willing to spend like 18 dollars on a burger or something yeah. if i know it's really well crafted so yeah. i know some people would see that and be like whoa there's no way i'm doing that but there are a couple places that i want to shout out one um more of a bakery than a restaurant but if you're at all a fan of cupcakes dave's cakes of omaha not only has the best cupcakes that i think you'll find but they're enormous and they're two dollars a piece wow yeah which if you're going to most like craft bakeries and getting a cupcake you know of this size you're probably going to pay 350 or four dollars mm -hmm. to get them for two is just an absolute steal and then I want to shout out another place. Uh, it's actually in Bellevue and it's new ish, but I have absolutely fallen in love with it. So there's this husband and wife team that have owned a food truck called for the love of food truck for about the past decade. And a couple months ago, they moved into a brick and mortar for the first time and their burritos are the best I've ever had and literally i held it up to my head it's as big as my head i'm pretty sure it weighs <laughs> at least two pounds if you want to get multiple meals out of it you can and it's like 12 bucks nice and i remember the first time i went and the owners are so sweet it's the husband who's on the grill he's doing all the cooking and uh, the wife jacqueline she's the one at the front counter and i ordered a, a burrito and i was like are there do you guys have any like side dishes that go with the burritos and she's like well we we have chips but i, I don't know if you're gonna need anything else <laughs> and i was like i i i don't i know i don't look like it but i can eat a little <laughs> bit and yeah she hands me this thing and it was just like an infant <laughs> and it was so incredibly good so yeah you might at first say like you know especially if you're someone who sees chipotle's increases and say like oh 11 dollars for a chipotle burrito why would i pay you know 12 or 13 here you're getting at least one giant meal probably two meals out of this place like my wife could easily go my wife and i could easily go and share a burrito there dang yeah cool what what, what was that called again uh for the love of food cafe okay. and it's out in bellevue off of galvin road oh wow. that i do you, know yeah, a little bit of the address say. because <laughs> when i posted about it it kind of blew up and then everyone was like what's the address what's the address so i to i used to have like the exact address in my brain but <laughs> it's now lost i think i remember you posting that photo on your instagram it was about insane. how big it was yes yeah. Well, cool. I'll have to check that one out. Um, so the last question we had was favorite Hispanic food places. Yes. Yeah, this is a good one. Do you want to go first? Uh, do you want to like ping back and forth? Yeah. Okay. I okay. wrote. I wrote down two. I don't okay. know how many. You I have three. Okay. So perfect. I can go first. Yeah. Uh, La Poblanita is that my was first one. one. Of mine. Yes. <laughs> I love La Poblanita. That's how you know that's really good because both of us came up with that answer. Yes. It's uh. It's in south though mm -hmm. it's in a it is so small i think it's i think that place used to just be somebody's house and it's yeah. a small house but the food there so good is incredible yeah i mean everything i've had is very very good i specifically want to shout out the fuego tacos which is like their version of birria tacos mm. uh, best i've had <laughs> and then their uh chicken mole is okay. just if you like mole at all, just kind of that spicy, sweet, bitter, chocolatey sauce on yeah. chicken with handmade tortillas. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you like about that place? Um, I mean, all of, I think I've only had, I don't know what tacos I've had. I've had some sort of tacos, but I just remember them being really good. The atmosphere in there is just really cool. Like it's like this baby blue inside, like all the walls are painted baby blue. And then they have this little like cute neon sign on the wall. Like the owners are there. They'll like come out and talk to you. It's just like a good atmosphere. And like you said, it's small. I think there's like four tables in there. So you go in and yeah, it literally does feel like you're just 
in you're in someone's dining room, room. Yeah. yeah it's so cool <laughs> yeah and it, it's on 20th street in the vinton street neighborhood i didn't write down like the exact address but if you guys want to go check it out i think i went on my or the last time i was there i went on my way to the zoo mm. so it was kind of a that was a fun day like, yeah that'd be a perfect tacos, pre or zoo. post zoo yeah meal yeah. yeah okay the other one that i wrote down was Takaria Tijuana. Mm, um, yes. Honestly, so many places on 24th Street down there. Like, I don't think you can go wrong with any of those. Um, but yeah, I think I had gone to that. The last time I went there was with my stepdad, and he also like loves tacos. And um, so that was a good experience too. Just 10 out of 10 on all the food. And I love that you gave them a shout out because, yeah, I mean, you can go down in in South O and, and throw a rock and hit you know, four great taco spots. Yeah. But Taqueria Tijuana actually just opened another location in L Street Marketplace probably oh. a month or two ago. So if you're out in West O and you want to oh get gosh. legit authentic tacos, yeah. now you can. I had no idea. Yes. Wait, what is L Street Marketplace? Um, there, There's like a, I don't know, it's off L Street. Um, and There's like a Target, Walmart, Home oh, Depot. Just, all, okay, I yeah. see. I thought it was some like, like little market area oh no 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 it's, it's nothing special it's actually pretty commercialized like where sam's club area. yes exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah no, you know, know the place okay so they because there are a lot of restaurants in there so mm -hmm. they just okay and that's kind of actually close to where we're at right now very close maybe i'll have to go there after we're done recording this there you go lunch. yeah oh my gosh okay cool um what was your last one or your next one okay two more two more quick ones i promise i'll be brief one is uh, Avalis Latin Market, which is this tiny little, I mean, it, it's essentially, it, it was intended to be like a small grocery store for Latin food. It's off 108th and Q on like the back side of a strip mall, but they've got a deli counter in the back where they're serving tacos and uh, burritos and enchiladas and you can get enchiladas and carne asada and tamales and everything to take home if you want or they've got some tables in there where you can eat there their food is spectacular their quesadilla which is essentially just like the greatest quesadilla you'll ever have i love that and if you're at all fan of cuban sandwiches I went on like a huge Cuban sandwich mission. I tried over 20 in Omaha wow. over the last probably six months. Theirs is my favorite. Really? Yes. So that's okay. one I definitely want to shout out. And then the other one is uh, Corner Kitchen, um, which is, I would have to Google the address. It's a little bit out of the way, but they fuse Mexican cooking with uh, Asian flavors to just create like this really, and I'm very cautious around fusion because fusion food can be like really messy and it can just kind of end up being a bit of a, you know, scattershot mess. Mm -hmm. Not here. Oscar Hernandez is a chef there. He does a phenomenal job and his food just is spectacular. I could recommend anything on the menu there. I'm wow. very, very supportive of that place. I feel like I now just from talking to you this past hour have a huge list of new places i need to go to the cupcake place the gyro euro place mm -hmm. all these taco places can, can you just imagine what it's like to live in my brain yeah. at all times all like all i do is think about restaurants and where i can eat next and yeah. how i'm going to work all this off because <laughs> i just can't spend enough time at the gym when you first started like really reviewing restaurants and stuff did you ever wonder if you were going to run out of places because i know that when i first started omaha places i was like how long can i keep this up it, yes well i don't know if i doubted necessarily but i specifically remember after i did the podcast for probably five months and it was starting to get a little bit of traction i remember i was having dinner with my parents and my mom was like we're really proud of you like this is cool what you're doing do you think that you'll have enough restaurants and chefs to sustain it? And I was like, I think so. I mean, it, things are going well now. And I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm booked out through July. Wow. Already. Yeah. And we're recording this in mid May. I mean, there's just, there's constantly new concepts that are popping up all the time and new talents that are, that are being um, discovered. And then there's places like Izzy's where, mm -hmm. you know, he, he grew up, 
not grew up, but like kind of cut his teeth in the restaurant industry on this school bus that he transformed into a food truck. And now he's in a brick and mortar. That's something totally different. Yeah. So I would love to have Brett on the show again and ask him like, how did you make that transition? What's the difference between serving on a food truck and in a brick and mortar? You know, how do you prepare to have people actually in your restaurant? How do you learn how to design a restaurant? I mean, there are so many stories to tell so many stories that you can bring up and update over time that I don't, I don't think I'm going to run out of anything anytime soon. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like especially in where in the season that Omaha is in right now of, I feel like we're having really rapid growth and it's been like that for the past, you know, five, 10 years. And I think it's really fun to be a content creator in this season because we get to like be a part of that growth and like really see all these concepts that are happening and opening and people are moving to the city every year. And that's just really fun. Yeah. And that's what I love about what you guys do is like, yeah, I focus mostly on the food stuff and there's all kinds of restaurants, but you guys highlight so many other places too. I mean, you, you, you said that I've given you some new restaurants. I've got new places to go to now where I can get shampoo or soap or, (laughs) but you know, these are important things and I'm all about supporting local. So Mm -hmm. why am I getting, you know, a giant brand from Hy-Vee or whatever, when I could go support that awesome place in Dundee you were talking about. Yeah, definitely. Um, Okay. I think we can move on to events and I know you are mostly a restaurant guy. So, um, if you know of any events, feel free to shout them out. But if not, I can just shout out the ones. Go for I, it. The ones that I sent over to you in the notes, I actually realized, well, one of them was wrong. So <laughs> don't go awesome. off the notes. That so I'm nice you. and prepared for, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so these are events happening May 26th to, actually, I think it's, I wrote down the wrong dates, 23rd to 26th, I believe. Uh, yes, 23rd to 26th. And... First thing we have, um, there's a new play at Blue Barn that's starting. That's starting May 23rd and actually goes until June 23rd. Um, this is actually fun. I don't know if you've ever been to Blue Barn before. No, tell me about it. What it's, is it? It's like a really small theater. They do a lot of like kind of indie shows. I don't know if that's the correct terminology in the theater world. Nothing that you're going to see like at the Orpheum or on Broadway or anything. All locally produced, local actors, all that kind of stuff. And it's located right next to Via Farina. Oh, so that is actually okay, a really yes, fun I do night. know that now. Yeah, yes. The, I love Via Farina. Anytime I go to Blue Barn, I have to go to Via Farina beforehand. And that's like a perfect date night, too. Like it's that's a, a good night down in Little Italy. OK, So if you guys want to want to do that, POTUS at the Blue Barn starts May 23rd. And another one that I thought was fun, the first drive-in movie at Falconwood Park is starting uh, on the 23rd, too, I believe. They're showing Shrek, which is classic. classic. Yes. And I feel like there's one other drive-in theater way out in, like, like past Elkhorn, I think. So uh, Falconwood Park is down in Bellevue. If you guys haven't been down there, they're going to be doing lots of drive-in movies. I think actually every Thursday throughout the summer. Okay. They're five dollars a person. They are dog friendly too, so you can bring you your bring dog. Bring Betty. Yep. Let's go. Is that what your dog's name is, Betty? Yeah. Cute. <laughs> I didn't know you had a dog actually. Yeah, we well, got a four-year-old golden retriever. Oh, cool. And he is just getting to that phase. I mean, he's still a little bit of trouble, but he's starting to mature. And we're like, hey, you're like a little <laughs> adult now. This is kind of nice. You're not just going crazy yep. all the time. Yep. I just got a kitten like really? literally two days ago. Oh my gosh. So we're still, we're in the learning phase. <laughs> yes. I was going to say that uh, um, there are joys that come with that season and there are, there are struggles as well. What's yeah. the kitten's name? Jelly bean. <laughs> Stop. That is too cute. <laughs> it's the name she came with, but I was like, I have to keep you gotta that. You got to keep that. Yeah. yeah. Also, there's so many like cute little nicknames that I've made out of it. I've been calling her Baby Bean because she's just like so tiny. I think she's only like, I don't know how old she is, but still like very, very tiny. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she she plays. She actually this morning when I was getting ready, I had one of my dresser drawers open and she crawled in the drawer and I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. Well, then she crawled behind the drawer and I was like, oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, how am I going to get you out? It's like, I can't shut you in there. So that was a bit of a struggle, but we got her out. So I'm sure there will be many more 
mishaps like that in my near future. <laughs> well, congratulations, though. That is very Thank exciting. You. Thank you. Uh, okay, back to events. Um, the other one that I wrote down, actually, this is not happening this weekend, but it will start before our next podcast episode comes out. So I wanted to give it a shout out. Moulin Rouge is coming to the oh, Orpheum. Yeah. yeah, that's very exciting. That is not local. So if you want a local show, go to Blue Barn. If you want Broadway, go to the Orpheum. That starts May 28th. And I think it's just there from like the 28th through that next weekend. So we'll probably shout it out next week too as well. But lots of fun events. Also, if you guys want even more events, we do our What's Happening in Omaha This Weekend video and newsletter every Thursday. So you can go watch that, subscribe to our newsletter, hear all the things. Yeah. Any last words of wisdom you want to give to the Omaha Places listeners? Uh, well, one thing, if you're going to that show at the Orpheum or any show at the Orpheum, consider going to Mercury, Oh, yeah. which is the bar that's only about a block or two away it is the coolest bar. Mm -hmm. They like basically transform it every three or four months, every season. They come out with an entirely new cocktail menu based around a theme. And then they change all the decoration in there too. So, I mean, we've yeah. gone in there and, it, and one theme was like jock jams. <laughs> one time it was like different cereals. So it was like a bunch of drinks themed around cereals. Their old fashioned is fantastic. And they're especially amazing around Christmas, but a, they have just incredible cocktails. Like if I were to choose one place to go for craft cocktails in Omaha, I'd be there. But B, their food is actually really good too. Like they're hand making pasta back in this tiny kitchen. <laughs> their burger is very, very good. Their deviled eggs are good. I mean, it's it's a small menu, but everything I've had on there is is excellent. It's amazing. Yeah. Yes. And it's like a block away from. from oh, Mercury. it's right there. Yeah. Uh, I think the la it's been a long time since I've been to Mercury, but last time I went, they had the menu actually printed on a CD case, like one of yes. those old fashioned CDs. Yes. And I think when, I think I remember seeing photos when they did the cereal one, the menu was like printed on the cereal boxes. Yes. So they get so creative with the, with the things that they do in there. So it's like going to a completely new restaurant every time you go. Yeah. The first time that I went was actually, it was that experience that you had where they've got like the little zipper, like trapper keeper that we all had when we were, you know, eight years old and CDs were so popular and yeah. each CD had a different cocktail on it and it had like <laughs> the different ingredients. So yeah, you unzip this thing and then like scroll through to look at the menu. I don't so know cool. how they come up with that stuff, but it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Good. That's a good shout out. That's a yeah, good tip. Perfect date night or just night out with friends. Anything. Exactly. Go see Moulin Rouge. Yeah. And I think overall, I think my advice would just be always be willing to try new stuff. I mean, I can't tell you how many times people will tell me, thank you so much for posting about this restaurant. You know, we, we have our three or four favorites and that's usually all we do. So it was nice to go out and try something different. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with having favorites. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with that at all, but Omaha just has so much to offer. I mean, yeah. I don't think you, would have any idea if you weren't like obsessed with it like I am that we have you know uh, a Mexican Asian fusion restaurant that you can get Ecuadorian cuisine here that you yeah. can get uh, Nepalese dumplings like you can get food from all over the world all different types of cuisines at all different price points mm -hmm. in one city so just keep an open mind and be willing to try yeah. new stuff. I always say that I think Omaha is what you make of it. Like, yes. Yes. It's very easy, especially with how spread out our city is to just kind of stay in your neighborhood. I mean, sometimes I even find myself falling into that sure. trap where I'm like, I haven't left Exarbon in a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, once you kind of venture out, like there really is so much to explore in the city. So yeah. Good, good advice. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me on. Are yeah. you kidding? I got to come on the <laughs> Omaha Places podcast. You're our first guest too. I don't know if you what? knew that. Yeah. Oh, wow. I yeah. did not. I knew this was a new podcast, but I didn't know I was the first guest. Yeah. What an honor. This is a milestone oh for us. Gosh. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for being here. And yeah, definitely go check out the Restaurant Hoppin podcast. I'm assuming you can get it wherever you get your podcast. Yeah. YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, yeah, wherever you would normally get podcasts and then just on social media, just Dan Hoppen, H-O-P-P-E-N. If you want to see some pictures of food and 
yeah. maybe go try some out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for listening, guys. We'll catch you next week. Bye. A Huda Media Production.